Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of My Big Fat Journey where I think it's a little dark. That's ah, a little better. Yeah, welcome back to another week. Another week of learning and observing. Where this was this was an interesting week. Also, I got a haircut. Where I did one thing and I thought it was going to affect the weight loss substantially to the point of where I thought I wasn't going to lose anything. And it was basically the last birthday meal that I still had to do. Uh, me and the girlfriend agreed that we were going to go to Golden Corral for my birthday. Golden Corral is not exactly a keto-friendly place, considering pretty much 98% of what they have is nothing but carbs. So, uh, I did have a cheat day with everything else around it being completely keto. So I was hoping, I was hoping that everything would still go according to plan and I would still have a loss. And that was the case. So let's go ahead and get to the weight loss of the week where we weighed in at 287.4 last week. And then this week, 282.8, giving us a 4.6 pound loss, taking us back to 191.8 pounds lost since the beginning of the journey. So we are getting there and I'm going to go extremely hard this week and I'm I don't know what the weight loss is going to look like but I mean we went from 10.2 to 4.6 and that 4.6 was with a cheat day one more week could it be possible to do an 8.2 pound loss maybe to get us right back to where we need to be it could be I'm, I'm not going to hold out hope for it, but I'm going to try and go a little bit extra hard this week to try and do another five, maybe. I, I would be very happy with another five, because I think I was predicting about halfway through September originally, or maybe it was halfway through August. Was it halfway through August or September? Regardless, I was thinking that it was going to take a little bit of time to get us back to where we needed to go. And right now, I think we're kind of ahead of schedule. I'm very, very happy with that. Still, no regrets on vacation. But let's get to the Golden Corral, right? Let's go ahead and get to it. I got some pictures of the plate. Boom, there. And let me tell you what. It was absolutely delicious. So with Golden Corral, it was a very, very nice break. It was interesting to try a bunch of different foods I haven't gotten to try in a while. And that's the... That's the joy of buffets for me. It's not so much the consumption of how much can I eat. Ooh, yes, let's go ahead and get yum, yum, yum. Um, the pleasure from a buffet that I get is the fact I can try so many different things. Where if you go to a restaurant, you're limited to just two sides. You may get bread, you may not, and then you only get one entree usually. Where with a buffet, you do get to try as much as you want of different sides as possible. And... Let me tell you what, the mac and cheese was absolutely not good. I was like having high hopes. I was like, ooh, they have mac and cheese. And I should have known. I should have known just by the look of it. It just didn't look good. It just wasn't. It was so disappointing. <laughs> but the sweet corn pudding, that one was good. That was good. That was surprising. Mashed potatoes and gravy were always absolutely amazing. Fried chicken was good. And the sirloins, if you ever go to Golden Corral, make sure you get the sirloins a nice good medium at the beginning i mentioned observations and this was the one thing that bothered me a lot i'm pretty sure for my age and older i was the skinniest person in there and it was something i wasn't prepared for uh you usually hear with a lot of different people how america is very very obese and no place better on earth to see just how obese the world truly is than just going to a golden corral and it it hurt to see I, I mean sure it makes me feel good about myself that yeah i'm not in a league like with these people anymore but i just watched all these people going up to the buffet and they have what i call the fat waddle of where it's just because of foot pain. I mean, people are just waddling back and forth to the buffet. And it's just looking at what's on their plates. 
one older lady, probably about in her 40s to 50s, maybe just slightly older, came back with just a huge bowl of mac and cheese. And I'm like, there's not much nutrition there. And I, I just, I, my view on the world has completely changed because I'm no longer in the mindset of eat as much as I can to make myself feel better or seeing just a bowl of mac and cheese and just seeing not what's not behind it. I see how many carbs are in it and the lack of nutrition that you're getting from it. I see nothing but calorie, carb count, sugars, what's in it. I see nothing but what's happening. And it's fascinating to me that I have adjusted to this point of where I can go up to a buffet and I'm like, I'm only going to get one little scoop of mac and cheese so I can taste it and be done. And then also determining what's worth getting again. Like, what is worth a calorie for me anymore? What what is worth it? It just broke my heart. Because so many of these people are either going to have, if they don't already have, heart conditions, potential for diabetes, and just high blood pressure, cholesterol, you name it. It's all in their future, and there's and they just are blindly consuming all these foods, and they don't even realize that it's happening. It it hurts to see because they don't know, they just don't, and maybe they do know, and they're just so sucked into it that they just are, they don't care. I was there. I get it. it you can go into a, such a blindfold state of mind where you're just blindly just consuming stuff because why not? What 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 can happen? What is the worst that can happen? And until the worst does happen, do you wake up? I suffered with foot pain for so many years of my life and going about my days now where I don't have that extreme foot pain anymore. I don't know why I did what I did to myself for so long, for so many years. I just don't know why. Long story short, it was just surprising to see how many people in there were just blindly just going to town. Now, I'll tell you what, if you want to go with the quantity amount eaten, they were packing it down. There were people that went up three and four times that I observed and coming back with one to two plates at a time. I mean, that person who went up for the mac and cheese went up once and then sent her son, nephew, someone back up to get another bowl. And I'm just like, that's what you want to do, I guess. But I was not, I wasn't prepared to watch and witness that because it was so distracting from the meal itself was just seeing all these people just just being so unhealthy it was it was was scary like I got what I wanted to do I wanted to go in there and I wanted to have some foods I can't normally have and I wanted to be able to taste as many different things and I am very much content I felt guilty afterwards Um, and I felt freaking so toxic afterwards like afterwards we left and as I was like sitting in the car, I wasn't sure if I was going to vomit or not because it was just, I just felt bad. Like it, it, like it was a mixture of being full and then it's a mixture of also just, it's so hard to explain, but it's just toxic. Like you just, when you go from a ketogenic diet to going back to regular food, you just, you just feel horrible. You start to realize just how bad regular food can make you feel and you're just like so i walked around sam's club a bit and did some shopping did a lot of walking walking made me feel a lot better and then we ended up going to arby's and got some small creamsicle shakes or some mediums or something like that That that's that's how we ended the night and it was nice but it was uh it was just fascinating I think it's the best way of putting it was not ready to see that and to have that state of mind when it was happening. So, um, as for the cold that I was going through last week, I think I mentioned it. I basically went to the doctor. Doctor was like, yeah, 
yeah, you got a nice little chest infection going on. So right now, I'm getting that dealt with. I'm on a very, very nice antibiotic, and that is going to take this week to go ahead and get back through. So water weight could be a thing, but I kind of highly doubt it. I don't think we're going to be battling that at all. But I'm on my way to recovery, so that's good. And then I had him check some other things and pretty much clean bill health so far. I should be getting a phone call tomorrow with my blood test results and I will update you maybe midweek if there's anything major there. If there's no midweek video, then everything went good. <laughs> Just like I'm hoping. Hoping the cholesterol and everything is still down. But that was literally two days before I did Golden Corral. So that could have altered the numbers just a little bit. But doctor was very happy with the weight loss still because that was another 87, I think, some pounds from the last time I had seen him. So he was very, very happy with that. And there's nothing quite like that feeling. You're going to the doctor's office and the doctor actually being happy with you. Because <laughs> usually you go to the doctor and the doctor's just like, all right, what's wrong with you? Okay, let's fix you. There's always something wrong. But then when you have the doctor actually go, you know what, you're doing really, really good. I'm actually really proud of what you're able to do. And I'm hoping that with what I've been doing, that maybe he'll encourage some other people to go down that path. Originally, my doctor wanted me to go down the path of a diabetic medicine called Ozempic, which Ozempic has been known to help with weight loss and kind of boosting that metabolism that I don't have. And I'm glad I didn't choose that path. Because when I came when it came down to it, I was like, I can either go down a diabetic medicine that is meant for diabetes, which is something that I'm trying to avoid right now, or I can go ahead and try and actually do a different diet that might have a little bit better results. And I have zero regrets on the decision I made. Absolutely would choose keto time and time and time again. In fact, I still recommend it to so many people. Very, very happy with how this week went. Like I said, a 4.6 pound loss was a lot more than I was expecting and just absolutely blown away with that. And I feel like from vacation, I had one week that I was getting back into it, but then I had a cheat day. I feel like I'm slacking a little bit. I feel like I've been a little too lenient. That's why this week I wanna go back at it hard. I don't wanna have any cheats or anything. And I want to get right back into doing this hardcore. Let's get back to that 200 as fast as we can. So that way we can start doing the progression because we haven't gone below 200. Let's start getting the 201, 202 going because we still got a ways to go. Because like I said, we're going all the way to 238, I want to say. So we still got a decent chunk to go. So that is going to do it for this week, though. Everybody, thank you guys so much for the continued support. And I will see you guys back here next week. Good night.